letter is anonymous from a city employee, but it clearly accuses Justice Ward and ELQ of improprieties as far as the foundation goes. I'd like to see the letter. I was the lawyer, eh, Justice? Impropriety. I don't understand. Of course you do, Ned. It goes back to when ELQ under your auspices bought off the original partners in the real estate venture. That, that was you and grandfather and Lee Baldwin. Exactly. We paid inflated prices for the properties because we wanted to make sure that we got them for the incinerator project. Then when that bit the dust, grandfather here arranged for ELQ to buy them back from us. At the same inflated prices, which you insisted on because you didn't want to be left holding the bag. Why should I? And then, Ned, you took the inflated value rather than the fair market price as a corporate tax write-off. Well, of course I did. That's what ELQ paid for the property. Absolutely. Now, that sounds like a solid business decision to me, and there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with it, Edward? is that when we applied for the grant, it was at the same inflated price. In other words, the government has underwritten not only your hefty tax deduction, but the matching grant funds as well at an amount that has no basis in reality, at the taxpayer's expense. Now, wait a minute, wait a second, Justice. This is not illegal. I checked this out. Hell, I double-checked this with our corporate accountant. AJ, it is unethical. And you've dragged me and the entire Charles Street Foundation into it with you. You really didn't know about this. I read the application. I saw the figures that we submitted for the grant, but I didn't question them. But that's no excuse. You know the saying, Justice. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. What's your interest in this, Tom? Is it a civic concern or a more personal axe to grind? <sighs> really, Edward, you should be grateful I brought it to your attention. If it blows up, at least you've been warned. Well, it has blown up. And I, for one, would like to know exactly what you intend to do about it. Okay, okay. Now, what we don't want is to make the situation worse. There has been no cover-up, and we don't want to make it look like there was one. I need 24 hours to consult with our legal department. We can either amend the corporate tax return to reflect the market value of the real estate, or we can return the questionable portion of the grant. Either way, we're going to be writing a great big fat check. Now, wait a second. Maybe we don't have to do anything at all. I mean, come on. It's not like we're going to be making the same mistake again. Unacceptable, AJ, to me and to whomever wrote this letter. But they'll probably go to the press if it looks like we're ignoring them. That would be my guess. But I don't think 24 hours is too much to ask for. I'll be waiting for your response. I look forward to your solution. I don't trust him. He gets too much pleasure out of bad news. I still don't understand how we can be in any kind of trouble if technically this is legal. It is exactly your inability to grasp that particular nuance that makes it necessary for you to prepare your resignation from the Foundation. Now, I won't stand here and preach to you, A.J. I have found it necessary to walk a fine line on occasion, but I have the good sense not to ask Uncle Sam to take the stroll with me. I'll take full responsibility for what happened. And if the board sees fit to ask for my resignation, then I'll resign. But I'm doing it because I care too much about this foundation to cause it any more embarrassment. Me too. I am the one who filled out the application. I'm smart. I should have questioned the real estate prices. That's very noble, Keisha, but it's unnecessary. You were just expediting AJ's orders. I suggest we all just go home and look at our options. Grandfather, I'll be along in a minute. I'm going to close up here. Well, don't dawdle. We're far from done. I expect to hear from you soon, Edward. AJ, I'm sorry. The truth is, you didn't handle this any differently than Grandfather would have. So my advice to you is, is get him away from Ned and tell him exactly that. Thanks. Somehow I think it's going to be a little bit late for that, Jason. Well, uh, I'd, I'd better get home and see about damage control. Yeah.
AJ, I am so sorry. You know, I, um, I was supposed to help you, and I let you down. Keisha, I screwed this up all by myself. I want this to work. I really wanted this to work. I told you he wasn't ready for this. And I told you to keep an eye on him. Grandfather, I don't have time to babysit AJ just because he doesn't have the sense God gave him. Then you should have made the time, Matt. I should have known that you would convict AJ before I even got here. I filled that in. Alan, this is foundation business. We'll handle it. At AJ's expense, apparently, while you two are just so busy washing your hands of this entire mess. What mess? You don't want to know. I do. AJ has made the foundation a mess. Hi, sweetheart. What brings you up here? I was looking for you. I just talked to Brenda, but, uh... We can wait. Nobody knew about it? Oh, they all knew about it one way or the other. They just decided to make AJ the fall guy. Is this true, Edward? You don't understand. Now, the Foundation was supposed to resurrect ELQ's reputation, but now this ill-conceived incident will just completely undermine it. So someone has to pay for it, and you've decided that it's my son. He was in charge. Right. Against my advice. I told you so. Sounds very unpleasant coming from you, Ned. Well, I call him like I see him. Oh, well, here he is now. How does it feel, Junior? A night clerk at the Port Charles Hotel again. What were you thinking, A.J.? Grandfather, I was advised by your accountant. Of course, I suppose it's probably too much to expect that you'd fire him, too. It was a bonehead move. Hey, pal, I was protecting your tax write-off. Oh, please. Back off, Ned, and let him explain. Look, if I had put the actual value of the property in that grant, Ned, it would have completely undercut ELQ's tax break. Am I supposed to thank you? Are you crazy? And to top it off, Justice now has his nose out of joint. Now, his political career may be on the line, and you can bet that he won't back off until we've aired the whole thing out in public. And you decided to put it all on AJ's shoulders, right? Well, don't expect me to take the rap for his incompetence. If... Listen, listen. They don't stay mad at each other very long. Is this what happens when someone makes a mistake around here? Emily, we're a big family. We have a lot of different personalities, and... Sometimes when we get passionate about something, we have a tendency to get carried away. We hardly ever fought at my house. Emily, I'll, I'll get used to it. Just... Now, what you've done, AJ, is turn a PR coup into a PR nightmare. Look, you get off my back, Ned, because I was trying to save your butt. Excuse, wait, excuse me, I'm sorry for pointing this out, but wasn't it just a week ago everyone was telling AJ what a great job he was doing? I mean, come on, doesn't that count for something? No. No, not with this group. I'll tell you what, I might have to resign, Ned, but I'm not gonna stick around here and be your personal punching bag! Are you okay? He was the full-time director. I'm sorry. Uh, that, uh, little scene in there has given her a bit of a scare. Come here, I'm sorry. I, I don't like it much either. I never have. But you know, a long time ago, I learned that sometimes it's better when people vent their feelings than just keep them all bottled up inside. Father, you're not entirely off the hook either, Ned. If you hadn't been so damn preoccupied elsewhere, you might have had some overview of this situation. Oh, I rest my case. Ashton. The boy can't even stay in a fight long enough to finish.